So we have the next session, as you read on your, on your flyer, we have Box Elder School District. Um, they're going to tell us about what they've done to address suicide. Um, has it been a few years ago there were a lot? Just last year. Just, some, just last year. The okay. previous school year, not just this last one, but the 17-18. 17-18 school year, just too many. One is too many, but there will be more than one. I'll let them tell you more about it. So we have Superintendent Steve Carlson, and with him is our um, Deputy Superintendent, Gary Allen. And they're now going to present to us about what Powder School District um, tried to build themselves. Okay. Well, thank you. We're, we're really excited to be here, even though it looks like about a third of us are already Box Elder folks. And they're going to have a recap of all this stuff, because a lot of this stuff is stuff that they did that we recapped it. Um, we're really excited. Uh, just, just for an introduction, I'm, I'm in my beginning this year, my 37th year and in education. Uh, yeah, we'll become 19 as a superintendent, uh, building administrator for that, and I taught for 11 years prior to that. So. And then Gary is in his 20-somethingth year in administration. 28th year in administration, was a teacher before that. And so between us two gray-haired, bald uh, old dogs, we figure we're in the, we're in the 60 range of, of experience in administration and 70 years in education. And so we're uh, really excited to have Gary here. As, as, he's the assistant superintendent over secondary. We have with us also uh, Carrie. What's your last name? I'm tired. Greener. <laughs> She's our assistant superintendent over uh, the elementary, and we've got a whole plethora of principals and a couple of awesome teachers and a, a new, I don't know, who else do we got here? But they're, they're all in the front row trying to either give me the raspberries or support. I, I hope we understand what. As, as was mentioned, we uh, did have an issue in the, in the previous school year with suicide, but that brought us to a lot of thinking of, of what we're going to do. Gary, did you have those flyers? Okay, and I'm not sure what do we, I think right now is, is, I hate to say this, we just went through this yesterday, is the very next slide, is that the, yes. let's do that. While we pass those around, we, we'd like, let, uh, what happened was in the 17-18 school year, we had five suicides. Um, two of those young folks were um, lacrosse players, and both of those in the, I hate to say this word, but in reviewing or autopsying the previous months of their life, there really wasn't any signs like you normally have. And so it really shook us. These two guys were friends. They were really good lacrosse players. One of them that took his life was going to be the lead in the play uh, in the musical. I can't remember. The, what was the musical? Anybody remember? But very talented. The young man could sing, the guitar, uh, sing and play the guitar and harmonic was outstanding. I didn't have the privilege of knowing these two young men. I don't know if I'd ever met them. Like I said, I've only been here two years. But then we had, uh, the week before graduation, we had another young man take his life the same day that uh, a young man drowned out at Bear River High School. And uh, same weekend, that was the week before graduation. Uh, we had a, a young fourth, fifth grade young lady um, die in a, was it fourth, fourth, fifth grade? Die in a four-wheeler accident. And we had two cousins in a New Year's Eve motorcycle wreck. They were, it, because of the previous year, there was no snow. They were out riding motorcycles. They actually crashed into each other. And there, was, there was another one on the back, uh, another, I believe another cousin or a friend. He, he lived, but the other two died. So we had a lot of tragedy that year. And, and uh, with our five suicides and with knowing that that was the completers, and I hate to use that term, there were a lot, of course, attempts and a lot of ideation. And we had started down that path even previous to, to me getting here. But what happened was this lacrosse thing uh, took wings. And uh, I think Gary was one of the first ones that got called from, was it the DNUs or the Trib? I never remember. We first uh, were called by the Salt Lake Tribune. And then it went to the Washington Post. And then it went to Fox News. And then it went to the NBC Today. And this is what you will see today that's a pretty amazing yeah. conversation. But uh, we received a lot of attention for some efforts and, and specifically yeah. what this coach did. So this, uh, the article was on the, the Today Show, but this is the KSL one that next night that we felt like was even better uh, with Mike Hedrick. And so we'll start with that. If 
you've been injured in an accident, don't just hire any lawyer. We've worked and hire worked the out. law firm with had, the best client the reviews. Law. How has Robert J. DeBryan Associates achieved these top client reviews? It starts with our six-point client promise. Promise point number four, we'll come to you. Nights, weekends, whenever, and wherever is best for you and your family. Your case, our promise. Robert J. DeBryan Associates. Chat with us online right now at robertdebry.com or call 801-699-9999. Is ever going to fix the fact that my son, my youngest son, my best friend killed himself. There's a daughter-in-law I will never meet, and there are grandchildren that I will never hold. There are hikes, there are laughters, there's us singing together in my truck that will never... And it can't be fixed. There's no replacement for that. It's tough to listen to that. They knew the warning signs. They talked to their sons, read their text messages, and monitored social media. Still, though, two Utah families say they never saw suicide coming. Looking back, they see the importance of speaking out, sharing their stories, and changing cultures, trying to keep other families from experiencing the same tragedy. Nathan was up at 5.30 in the morning to go work out. He was active with his friends at school. He played lacrosse with his friends after. I was doing things with them. He was not just a sit-in-his-room kind of kid. Captain of the lacrosse team, Nathan Kalsert seemed to do it all. A solid student, he worked hard at his job, enjoyed the outdoors, and loved lacrosse. When he took his own life, his teammates, family, and community were stunned. I, I couldn't believe, I couldn't believe it. I mean, he was an amazing kid and had a great support system, lots of friends. Jason Ship, dad of teammate Jeremy Ship, responded to the call. I never could process that. I certainly didn't ever think that it would be my son uh, next. Six months after the death of their captain, the box elder bees learned they had lost another one of their own. It was another blow, seemingly out of the blue. When he decided to do something, he was all in. He would study it and learn about it and then do it. He taught himself to play the guitar. Jeremy's love of music rivaled only by his love of lacrosse. He also enjoyed the outdoors and was a fan of fitness. <laughs> We did uh, so many things together. Following Nathan's death, Ship had checked on his son. He had sent a text to a friend that said he had thought about suicide. And so I um, confronted him about it the next day, and he said, yeah, Dad, I, I thought about it, but, but I would never do that. It was just a thought. You know, obviously, looking back, I wish I would have done more. Looking back is all that's left for these parents, but they hope their experiences can be a lesson for others. He used to tease me about it, that I was the only parent he knew that was arguing for their child to do less, work less, study less, because I felt he was burning the candle at both ends. Our children are having to deal with lots of problems that to them seem huge. Whether the stress be from school, sports, or somewhere else, experts say teens process pressure differently than adults. Their brains are more impulsive, and they feel things more intensely. Jeremy grew up sharing his feelings as much as I thought any young man would, um, but obviously he kept some of the, the deepest ones to himself. I think that we should um, encourage young men to talk about their feelings. Box elder lacrosse coach Juan Gaetan is trying to do just that reaching out to all of his players, treating them to lunch, and talking openly. What's going on? I think it shows them that someone cares. I think it shows them that somebody's listening. To them, that's important. We need to figure out why this is happening and do what we can to stop it. Because Jeremy was a light to anybody that was around him. He's no longer here to share that light with anybody else. I always thought that it couldn't happen in my family. I always thought, certainly not Jeremy. It can happen and I don't know the answer. Heart goes out to those families. There are no definitive answers here. No one size fits all plan for every parent, but there are places that you can turn for help. If you have noticed a change in your child's behavior or you are concerned, you can use the symptom checker at childmind.org or you can call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline, that number 1-800-273-8255. Coming up tomorrow, as we continue our series, Kids Under Pressure, experts walk us through the right way to talk to your kids so that you're not adding to their stress. That is tomorrow night at 5 o'clock right here on KSL.
Okay, as you can see, that's a very touching uh, article um, on the. And if you want, you can look up um, that article on the news, and it has extended interviews with both sets of parents. And also, the Today Show uh, had a really uh, a good piece on it, and they had a, a professional talk about you know all the things that we're learning about today, and all the things that we're learning more about suicide. And you know, in in this particular case, these two young men probably were um, the exception to the rule of of what. Generally, we think about, you know, with, with suicide, the cipher in the snow type of kid. The, we're wondering if this, this was more the, the too much pressure and, 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 and that type of a thing. And so, you know, we're, we're trying to have, we've had a lot of parent meetings uh, the, the, across the, the, both the high schools. We talk a lot about it. And so uh, it's just been really tough to do. And, and with all that information, we knew we needed to do more. And all we could do was do what we could do and, and learn all we could. And fortunately, uh, I believe this... Um, coalition started about two or three years ago were you at the, who was who was the beginning of this thing anybody that's didn't they say today 17 18 so about then and so fortunately that's just as I moved here and, and we have uh, another lady that's been a great help to us Bonnie Young who's our uh, over our nursing services she was part of the the it used to be the northern Utah trauma C, trauma resiliency coalition plus a couple of other words in there that's why it changed to resilience um through caring connections, resilience through caring connections, RC squared. So uh, as we sat around, uh, not sat around, we were in a meeting one day, we, we call it our belt, our box elder leadership team, with, with Gary and Carrie and, and our uh, assistant superintendent over personnel, we wanted to come up with some sort of initiative that we could really stick to and really make a difference. And as we were sitting there talking, Gary was on his, uh, laptop and came and had seen this article in education leadership and it's an older uh, article but uh, it's called a case for school connectedness it said as many as 40 to 60 percent of students in urban suburban and rural are chronically disengaged from high school now that wasn't the case with these two but but our other three that was a problem they were those kids that just were really quiet and so we decided to come up with with uh, I believe what we call as our C initiative and as you can see, that got pushed around a little bit. Um, if you had that folder, did anybody not get that, that little pamphlet? I hope you all got one. And we've been, we've been uh, working this uh, C initiative all year. And we felt so strongly about it that we're going to go ahead and, and work it more next year. We're using the, we're still a little Bud Light term, but we're going to go uh, C Light versus C Right. We're even going to get deeper this next school year. And so if you look at the middle, the first S, of course, for all of you, and I assume most of you are educators, you know what PLCs are. We're always trying to do better with that and do a much better job, and that's part of our initiative. But the E in the middle is what we're uh, really, really, really focusing on. I think of all the things that we did, that was one of our main focuses, was to try to expand student connections. And there's just a ton of things that have, that have happened in our school district, and we have the good fortune we'll be able to talk about it. The last one was elevate employee appreciation. And I, can't, I don't know why that would have changed in the middle of the, of the, middle of the show, but it did. So. I, I do need to say this, uh, in the middle of there, in the Expand Student Connections, it's, it's interesting, but most of you are in this room because you had at least one teacher that really touched your lives, if you, especially if you're educators. Luckily, many of you had multiples. And for some reason, those folks just innately had that ability to make, with, to make connections with kids. And they, they just had that way within them. Somehow, they just knew it. What we have found out is that we have to be intentional about it. We have, to, we have to do things. We have to go out of our way. We have to get those more uh, cipher in the snow kind of teachers to be more outgoing and make connections with the kind of kids that they make connections with. Because the beauty about a, a public education is there's so many different personalities and so many different types of people that they can connect with all the types of people. And that's, that's why I'm a huge believer in extracurricular activities because they can you know get so many things that it can really help them become connected and uh, I, I will tell you this I would need I need to introduce one more person in our in our uh, presentation uh, our uh, box elder high school principal Jamie Kent uh, helped us put some of this together she, she takes a lot of pictures and and then later on Gary's going to take that portion of it but for the last week she's been fighting an incredible battle trying to help her husband save his life and he's he had blood clots hit his lungs and He's actually almost been pronounced dead a couple of times, but the last we heard, he's actually kind of been waking up a little bit and responding with, with head nods and squeezing hands. And they had a son 
they have a son who was in Alaska on his mission. They actually flew him home, and he, he's, he can only stay for seven days. I guess it's church rule. You have to stay only seven, or you can't go back to that same mission. So he came back thinking he was going to come back for his dad's funeral. They've had a family prayer, and things are going pretty well. So that's, but Jamie's a big part of that, and, and she would love to be here with us. But Gary's going to pick up the slack on that end. And I, I'll just say this. I, I, I know we're all from northern Utah. Cash is an outstanding school district. Logan, Weber, Ogden. The Box Elder rocks. <laughs> and I, I, love, I love being in Box Elder. Uh, I, I hope the board will keep me to get around for a long time. I have a board meeting tonight, so this long, this long day, and, and uh, we go to a board meeting tonight. And hopefully that'll just be the, the, the cherry on top of the pie. <laughs> Hope. Oh, there's a lot of wry little, wry little. So I'll turn the time over to my good friend, Gary. He has never spoke of a board meeting like that before. So <laughs> anyway, uh, we appreciate the chance to be here. I think uh, you can see the passion that superintendent has his participation in the band, his love for music and kids, and just his uh, environment where he works is, uh, we benefit from all of that. We decided as we uh, had our, uh, our meetings, as we came up with this initiative, we really felt strongly that we needed to help all students. And if you are a part of the, the literature and the discussions on resiliency, uh, these are some things that we have learned. Uh, we realize and know that about one-third of youth in our schools will experience a mental health concern sometime in their lifetime, and, and often we see it at our, in our schools. Um, I attended a conference uh, in December down in uh, Provo, and uh, it was Dr. Swenson, a child psychiatrist, and he said that the statistics so that only 1% of students are actually identified as having a disability in the area of emotional disturbance and would receive special education services. So those of you that have classes, what does that mean for the rest of your students in your class? It, it means that you're going to have students in there that are going to have some needs. And so that's another thing that we identified and, and our conversation center a, a lot around what do we do for the, that total student population. Even those students who would not qualify for a mental health diagnosis often need short-term support and help when they experience trauma, family difficulties, peer problems, or academic difficulties. And I think all of you understand that. So this became our training model for our principals throughout the year. We had a, a, a secondary principals meeting, an elementary principals, and then in all principals, we tried to provide uh, suggestions, research-based, evidence-based, and activities and things that we could uh, implement in our schools. Again, these uh, schools, for good or bad, but we do believe that we can provide probably the best support and help for problems in these areas. So trauma, uh, that first slide that we talked about, we had, the, we had the suicides as well as really hard things with student injuries, student deaths that were not suicide related. But you think of the trauma, uh, family difficulties, peer problems, academics, all of those become an intervention piece that we can try and help with. So we have the multi-tiered system of support. That's again a, a name that I don't think, uh, an acronym that we're not f foreign to. Uh, our district has benefited. Uh, we're a little behind some of the other larger districts, but for the first time in our uh, history or our existence, we were able to have school counselors in every elementary school. Uh, we appreciate the legislature for funding that. Uh, we have our school psychologists. We also have a good support from our school nurses who, uh, again, that's just one more level of connection for kids. Uh, we are trying to catch on with Cache Valley, but we have been able to in, uh, introduced this year some social, intern social workers. They've done a great model with that. We've added that as well as working with the U of U on some interns as well. And then again, our greatest sources are teachers and administrators that are in the classes every day. So this is again what we're trying to do. Uh, I like this quote. I heard this uh, again at a conference I attended, but primary prevention strategies 
work something like a preemptive vaccine and help ensure that every student gets some instruction in emotional well-being. And that's really our, that's really our charge after the sad things in, uh, that have happened in our district. Uh, we feel the need to do this for all kids. So part of that is we look at curriculum. We try and get a curriculum K through 12. We're trying to find some things that will help us in this area. And again, these are all things that we've implemented. This morning couldn't have been better on the ACEs presentation. We've had all of our uh, teachers and our administrators have uh, seen the ACEs. We have taken the survey as the adults, our Board of Education has. Uh, Vonda has a great resilience movie that she kind of does a traveling show with. We had that at the USU Brigham campus and we showed that in a public meeting in the evening. Uh, we have our MTSS. We are attending a conference next week to continue our direction there. Uh, we were excited to hear, uh, I believe it was Dr. Schramm talked about the VIA character strengths. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more, but we've implemented that in our district. And our goal is to use our strengths instead of our weaknesses and address our challenges with the strengths. Uh, we have uh, uh, Alina Pierce with us today from the Bearver Health Department. We are working closely with them. This is an exciting thing that we've added. We are using our SHARP survey data. We are looking at our at-risk factors, and then we are trying to uh, seek and implement curriculum that tie in with our SHARP survey. Our PBIS, uh, again, we have several schools that have been recognized for their positive behavior plans. Uh, a, a new effort that we're trying to implement is our restorative justice. I don't know if many of you are familiar with that, but it's a, it's a change in thinking where we try and do less punitive and we do more intervention and in trying to help kids. And, we have some success stories of trying to not go with the suspension and removing kids and trying to uh, work with them. And then the curriculum review, we're in the process of doing that. Uh, the health department has been huge as we review, have reviewed curriculum. So this introduces the fun stuff. This is what we have seen going on in our uh, different schools. This is where Mrs. Kent would have been here today. She compiled this information and she's been a spearhead between a lot of these uh, activities. Uh, let's see, go back. Okay, so uh, we, li we like this quote. Uh, talking in this. Here. <laughs> I don't know. So teach the students you have, not the students you wish you had. And uh, that's kind of uh, what we often hear. Uh, it breaks my heart when a a professional will come up and say, I'm, I'm tired of that kid, I want him out. Uh, you know, those, those break your heart. There might be reasons that it, it's a struggle, but we know that we need to work with who we have. So this will just be some examples. If you have questions, please uh, feel free to ask as we go along. A year ago, we worked with our, uh, uh, in Brigham City, and we wrote a grant and we had this idea that we would like to implement what we call lunch and learns. And we did this at the high school. The grant we wrote was to provide food for the teachers. And during their lunch, they would come in and they would uh, just pick a topic. And uh, we would have these discussions uh, during lunch. The main purpose of the lunch and learns was to talk about connections and how we can really get to know students and uh, amazing things happened with that. Uh, it got to where it was first driven by our school nurse, by administration, by outside agencies. To this year at Box Elder High School, the lunch and learns are ran by the teachers. And so our, our uh, PLC department groups, they select the topic with some guidelines and then they present to their staff. Uh, in that, we've talked about ACEs, classroom management, positive cueing, the cards that Dr. Schramm passes out on the five to one and, and the two minute conversations with students. All of those were topics at these uh, lunch and learns. Uh, greeting students at the door, grading relationships, those were all topics that happened in the lunch and learns. So this is uh, an activity that we did district-wide. We ask all principals to administer the VS character strengths to their staffs. 
and this was at Box Elder High. They all took their staffs, and then they matched up with faculty members uh, that had the same strengths. And uh, I was principal at Box Elder High. I know many of these people, but uh, we paired them up. And uh, the, the talk they said that happened at the school this year is those teachers had another connection with a, another colleague, and they says, hey, you have the same strength kind of a thing. These two gentlemen are, I think it's interesting, they're the head wrestling coaches at uh, Box Elder, and it, it seems like it might be strength or perseverance, and their number one strength was gratitude. Uh, and then you can see the others there, but uh, really a, a positive activity that, that happened at the school. This is another thing that we've implemented. Again, uh, this shows at Box Elder High, but uh, there are many schools that uh, did this. But uh, the challenge was that the teachers would step out in the hallways and they would recognize the students as they entered into their class. And so these are just several uh, pictures, uh, high fives, any uh, handshakes, whatever they do to recognize the kids. Uh, and then the challenge that was given to their staff was to do the positive cueing and the, uh, com uh, the two one-minute conversations each day. Hey, Gary, on the two-minute conversations, they were supposed to find a kid, a student they wouldn't normally talk to and go out of their way to have that one-minute conversation with them. So that was one of those, you know, directive things, and intentional things we tried to do to Great. make more connections. Great, thank you. Uh, this is what the principal had uh, lined up when the kids came back to school. So when they came back on that first day of school, she had the Happy New Year uh, again, uh, same idea. It's interesting, they said that uh, when they greeted the students at the door, when they came back from Christmas break, they had the administration at, strategically placed at each door, and they would speak to the kids as they walked in. And, and the stories that they tell is the first day, hoodies are pulled over their head, no eye contact. By the third or fourth day, Sweatshirts are off, and conversations were taking place. And to hear them talk about that, uh, the kids go, and, and they said initially the kids would look at them and says, are you feeling all right today? You, you don't talk to us like this. And, and it proceeded to be that kind of a interaction with the kids. Uh, this is a kind of a fun one. This, the, the picture here, the intermediate school out in Tremonton, they did the VIA strengths with their classes. Then they took the top five from each student. They wrote on each of their fingers, thumb, their, their strengths. And then they put that each classroom, as you walk down the hallways, had the students and their strengths. And then they took the top 10, and that's what you see in the middle. And then the idea was that as there's a class challenge, a difficulty, a problem, the teacher turned that conversation to how do we deal with this with our strengths as opposed to, to uh, any type of anger or resulting that way. You can see uh, just some other things they did. Uh, Harris, that little blurb in the middle there, it says at the beginning of the year, we had almost all of our students take the via strengths to find out their top character strengths. At Harris, our teachers and administrators have made it a point to focus on student strengths instead of their showing their weaknesses. And uh, that's been really, a, that's really been a, 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 a fun thing. The top picture, uh, student recognition, I think all schools have that. Uh, out in Tremont area at Harris Intermediate, they have a, a breakfast of champions and they recognize the students, and there are a lot of students that are recognized, and they have a breakfast for them, it's early in the morning, and uh, a, a sponsor from the Rotary Club, and uh, just kind of, it's a, it's a nice event, and then just recognizing students in the lower ones. The same uh, school out in Tremont, uh, they, to, to start back, the, the story behind this one is that the, the t uh, Teacher had made the comment, well, the principal had made the comment that some of the teachers during Christmas break says, oh, man, I am not ready to come back to school. I can't face those kids yet. We need a longer break. And they said, someone on the staff said, well, wait a minute. Um, what about those kids that are home and want to come back to school because they have nothing at home? And so that morning, they were waiting in the halls with their signs and they uh, greeted the kids as they came to school back from Christmas break. 
And uh, are you at Harris? Okay, I just wonder if, the, I, I was trying to see if someone could share uh, how that all went, uh, but we heard some really good feedback, and uh, I don't think those, te those students had any clue that that's what they would see when they walked in the building after a break. Uh, this is another activity that we did. Uh, we, uh, Carrier Assistant Superintendent, we did a book study, and uh, we talked about what is your hope, and then that was another thing that was taken back to the schools and implemented. Uh, it says, what is your hope for our students and for the rest of the year? This video got us thinking, and uh, they showed a video, and then the students replied to that. We did that as administrators. We always tried to model in our, in our meetings, and then hopefully it was taken back to the schools. Uh, this is another one of my favorite activities. This came from Bear River High School. We went to another training, and, show, and we were shown a video of... Uh, middle school in Reno, Nevada, and what they did is they took their class lists and they put those class lists on a wall, much as you can see there, with all the students, and then every member on the staff was to go through and put a mark if they had had any interaction with uh, the students on the class list, so that was their entire student population, and Christy, can you share a little bit about that and how, were there students that did not have any interaction and how many, could you share that just for a minute? surprised me and so the challenge was we gathered all of those names and each t teacher committed to pick up two or three of those names and make a connection a meaningful connection with them before the end of the trimester or before the end of the year and so I think as far as I know every student at Bear River High School had a, had a personal connection with a teacher and a, or an adult in our building so it was fun. And that goes back to that initial, that uh, from educational leadership, when they say there is a percentage of our students that are disconnected. Can you imagine to be there the three, four years and really a teacher not know a student? And that was pretty powerful when we saw that in our training and, and a compliments to, I know I think a couple other schools did that, but when Christy did that, I think she shared with us how powerful that was. Uh, Again, this is just another recognition that schools do. I know every school has ways to recognize students. We have a, an opportunity in our board meetings where four schools present at each board member prior to the board meeting starting. And what they do in that is they address our initiative that we passed out. So they share what they've done in each area of the C initiative, and they get 10 minutes. But the thing that was fun for us is all of the recognitions that the teachers were doing under the expanding student connection. And I think that all of you see that happening in your classrooms. Uh, again, I don't know if these are anything new, but it sure made a difference in, in kids. Uh, this is kind of a fun thing. I think this started at Bear River High, and again, I don't think it's a great idea, but our seniors will go and do a graduation walk through both of our intermediate schools. And so they get a handful of students and they get their caps and gowns on and they walk through. And then the conversation is, is look, you guys, this is what you're working towards. This is where you're, where you can be. And uh, I've just heard nothing but positive about that. And the principals of those younger schools uh, are just, uh, they just say to see the kids and they recognize maybe someone that's walking through or they have that connection. Again, uh, we just felt the need for student connections, and I think hopefully as we're sharing these with you, you're, you're getting an idea of, of what can happen in your schools and, and the need that we felt we, we, we needed to do. I love this one. Uh, every time the bell rings, a student has met their goal. And uh, the, the recognition, and uh, I know... Uh, Ashley, would you mind just sharing what you do when you come in and sing when they've met the goal or what you do, please? Would you, would you just share that one? It's kind of dorky, but when we have 100% attendance, um, they just have a whiteboard outside their classroom doors. A teacher or one of the students writes 100%. And then at the end of the day, I just walk the halls and I go and I have a little cheer that I do for them when they have 100% attendance. And they let me 
me know if I've forgotten them, if I was at a meeting that day and couldn't go through, then I hear about it the next day and I have to go and do a double over and over. <laughs> so what's one of those years? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> I uh, asked her to do that, but I, I didn't tell you you'd have to sing. So you have to go. <laughs> so that's another example, but uh, the principal at Fielding has just retired, and uh, they're lucky because they're getting Mrs. Kapner, who's leaving the big kids, to go down to the elementary. But I think they're going to be in good hands. But uh, again, a lot of student recognition. Uh, so that's, a, that's an example there that uh, we, we got to hear about. And, uh, and the kids, just look at that smile. So great, thanks. Uh, this is for our alternative high school. And uh, Mrs. Kent, who would have been here, had been the principal at our, our alternative high school. And uh, I'll tell you, she, she believed and loved those kids. And uh, she, she treated them as normal and great as we do at a, uh, at a traditional school. But this is a topic that she had, uh, where are we sailing this year and what is our hope? This is a, another thing, and I believe in our schools, and again, please, I'm not saying it's just in Box Elder, but I know multiple schools do canned food drives. I know multiple schools do all these little things for Eagle Scout projects or for the community pantry or whatever. But this was another from the community high school uh, with service. And you can see they did the hats, they did some quilting, they did some yard work. So all of those were uh, topics and efforts that the community high school made. This one is kind of cool. Uh, again, when you think of opportunities that kids have or do not have, uh, Mrs. Kent got lined up a year ago, and that group of students from the Alternative High School uh, went and saw Hamilton. And so that is the group all dressed up. And I think she said probably, I think she said 80 to 90 percent of those kids had never been to a concert or anything like that. Uh, and uh, I, I am not sure what's going up in the top one. Uh, and then talking about their graduation. And uh, we have our graduation for our alternative high students this Thursday. And uh, I, again, it's, it's just a, a, great, uh, a great environment that she's tried to create. And again, if we keep coming back to a broken record speech, it's building those connections. These are just pictures of the traditional high schools, all of the things that they you know, they get involved in uh, the games, the athletics, all of those things. Uh, I think the one at Bear River High, they have a, a that's your pantry, mm -hmm. where students can come in and get food. Well, that was our National Honor Society doing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I think on our committee, on the RC Squared Committee, uh, to hear the groups that donate. And uh, the one that surprised me was the one where the agency that provides diapers for families. Uh, the formula for families and those kind of things. So again, there's uh, all of these can provide connections, but we, we believe that we're missing a percentage that aren't involved. And, and I think that's our challenge. Middle level, uh, again, some great things that happen, just recognition. Uh, I don't know all of these, what they're showing there. These are recognitions that they've received from competitions that they attended. Uh, the middle school has some great things. They just uh, received a big athletic grant and uh, some things that they do there. But again, each level has its own unique needs. I think that's another thing. When I was principal years ago to, uh, at an intermediate school, at that time we had the middle level philosophy was about, they called it pies, physical, intellectual, emotional, and social. And really our, our interaction with the kids at that time was more emotional and social. 
uh, we, well, in physical too, we had intramurals just like Creighton and none other, and we tried to meet that need of, of just that population. Uh, elementary, I'm sure there could be element. When we get done here, I'd like to just maybe open it up to share ideas that you're doing at your schools. But lunch with the teacher, how fun is that? If you remember doing that, or lunch with the principal, all of those things uh, are just positive things. Again, I love the smiles in that picture with the having lunch. Uh, pretty, pretty fun. So this is kind of our motto as we wrap things up. Every student, every day, whatever it takes. We, we don't want to leave anybody out. We don't want to ignore. Uh, we don't want to forget. Uh, again, that's powerful activity that the high school did on identifying names where there had been some kind of interaction or if there had been none. And we, we recognize that there were some that have not had any connections. Uh, any questions? Superintendent, anything to add? Just, you know, a couple other things. One that, as I sat there, we didn't get pictures of, but one of the things that they did in, and I'm sorry, I think, I think, Corinda, was it your school that did the haircuts first? No, it's Mark's. It was, it was Garland. Garland first. first. Garland actually, uh, really Garland yeah. Elementary went to mm -hmm. some of the local hair salons and they got, got, uh, what are they called? Stylists. Yeah. That's a good word. <laughs> Stylists to come. And they, they, uh, they knew a lot of kids, you know, probably didn't, hadn't had a haircut and that kind of thing. So they got a hold of mom and dad and, and they uh, uh, brought them in and a bunch of kids got haircuts. It was a hair, hair club. A hair club. club. And they oh. taught them how to they, style they their hair and how to watch their hair. And they brought little breaths and things and showed the girls how to comb their hair and swish back their bangs. And they talked about the little boys that didn't know how to style their hair. And, the counselors kind of who we had it at Altmer, uh, their elementary counselor, and she said they would be so cute because they would come in the morning, they always had a hair club in the morning so the kids could all get their hair each yeah, day. Cool. And she goes, those little boys would just flop around just with their, For their, swag. their first <laughs> actual and haircut. Their cool hair. And then, so then it, it just started with that, and then it moved to the haircuts. And um, stylists just loved to come in, they got permission, and they, they kept doing that like throughout the whole year. Those little kids would come back That's in so and get their cool. hair trimmed. And, they taught them how to shampoo their hair, and there's cute YouTube videos out there actually about how to shampoo your hair. <laughs> and got the little kids to, ha to teach them how to take care of themselves and how much better they behaved in school when they looked and felt better about who they are. It was pretty cool. You know, I'd like to just, and each one of these principals here, uh, for instance, this young lady right here is, is uh, Tawny Bocut, who's a teacher out of Fielding. And one of the first times I, I saw this, their, one of their models was, was grit. At Fielding, is that true? And she took her her uh, round black um, clock and put a G and a T in front of it. Got grit. I think that's the first place I saw that. And I know people, and we talked a lot about grit and having grit to get through the tough times, kind of like that via strengths thing. And so there's there's just so many things that you know on social media that you get out there and you can see all the great things that are going on and, and you know a lot of teachers or principals are just doing it without advertising it as much so I, I'm just really proud and, and I think that the key to it is is you have to be intentional you have to actually make sure that you go do it and make sure you reach those those 30 or 35 that were Bear River High School that had that didn't have an intentional connection well, there's another one back there too aren't you one of our teachers no, you, you, you are. Tony. Yes. Tony. Okay. There's kind of a shadow on your face, and she she's another one that has Facebook doing stuff all the time. So th thank you. I thought well, that's 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 one of ours too. Anyway, why are you mad at some of these guys who won't let you sit? I was late. Okay. Okay. Jeez, you guys, include a girl, would you? Oh, okay. There you go. Okay. I knew they they asked those these two. I actually had a, a, a Facebook page together called Two Blonde Teachers. Mm -hmm. that, and, they, and I go, well, they're there as individuals, and they're also two blonde teachers. Back there, I saw him. Yeah. Um, I've been hearing that in youth suicide, LGBTQ affiliation is yes. a factor. And I wondered if you were able to address that directly or indirectly, or how it figured into your concerns. You know, we, we uh, have those clubs in our secondary schools, and we support them, and uh, I think, you know, as the teachers, as the principals talk to their teachers, we try to make sure that we're aware of those and make sure that they're included and make sure that, you know, we have all of the necessary things in place to be able to help those, those folks. And so we're very aware of it, and 
try our best to, you know, to, to make them feel just like they're, like they are, one of us. And so we try to make sure they don't get, and I think both, especially at our high schools, that's where you see it a little bit more, but even in our middle schools, you know, we had a, we actually had a, a help me, was it a young girl that wanted to wear a red, because we still do, the, the, for Bear River High, we do the red for boys and the white for girls. And uh, this one girl wanted to do a red. And for some reason, I don't know why, she moved away before it actually happened. And it started a big conversation. And we, it was actually, believe it or not, a pretty hot topic. And we're, we're, we're probably going to you know, go to all red next year and, and box elders end up going, going purple. And so that's, that's one of those things we you know, try to take into consideration. You never probably would have thought of a few years back. But you know, if they identify more with that, then that's, that's what we need to do. And I, I just wish we could spend another hour or two and we had all of the stories that, that have gone on you know, in, in Box Elder High. I will say this, and you, you knock on wood because you worry all summer, but we, we did not have a, a, a suicide completion during the school year. And so, you know, you never, it's one of those things, all the efforts, all the work, all the time, all the worry, everything you do, you never really, you never really know. And, and tell me, you know, you've all heard those incredible stories about, uh, well, let me just go back. One other thing, uh, we were in uh, collaboration with IHC out in Tremont, the, the hospital out in Tremont in IHC. And they brought in Kevin Hines. Have you, how many of you heard of Kevin Hines? He's a gentleman that jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge. There's been close to 2,000 people jump off. He's one of 25 who lived. And one of the, out of that 25, one of the few that lived without some really drastic physical impairment. And I, he, he came and gave a talk to Bear River High School. We took and had it videotaped, not videotaped, but live streamed through all of our secondary schools. And one of the touching things that he said was when he, he, he was bipolar and he'd had some issues, still is, but he said, I was so depressed and so sad that I'd made up my mind I was going to go to the Golden Gate Bridge and jump off. And he said, on the bus, I had on my hoodie and I was crying and I was distraught. And he talked about this person on the bus and then that person on the bus. He says, if just one person, if just one person would have said to me, hey, are you okay? Is there anything we can do for you? He says, I wouldn't have jumped. And that, that, of all that speech that he gave and all the things that he talked about, that one thing said, that's really what we want. We want to make a connection with somebody. We want, we want to feel like we're appreciated and loved. And, and uh, so that, that's really huge. So we've talked an awful lot. We actually were advertised as a panel to ask for Q&A. Any, any questions and answers? I think we're pretty close to about the end of our time, aren't we? Was it right now? We've got three minutes. Three minutes. Q&A. Please. Uh, how, how can you get like more information on like trainings and stuff? Like you guys mentioned that you're doing more trainings here and there. How can like I find out more about what? Stuff you know, like this? I guess social media is where we pump a lot of it. And I, if I were you, I'd find out about this RC Squared uh, organization. I'll tell you what is awesome is uh, if you could, did by any chance before lunch to go, did you go to Dave, Dave Schramm's yeah. breakout? Get on his Facebook. Get, hit, like him on Facebook. Uh, he, we heard him talk two years ago, and um, mm -hmm. Carrie, that we mentioned during our principals meetings, we, we do uh, culture time basically on our principals, and we we did the happiness advantage two years ago in the book, mm -hmm. and this year we're doing culturize. But I, I think you know, and I don't know what the answer is. Somebody might have a better answer how to know about all these trainings because you know, I, in our case, being in education, like the MTSS next week. Pretty much, I think most everybody's going to be educators. But I think there's, you know, that's one of those things like this, everybody's welcome. So I wish I had the solid answer. I'd find this all out because. One of the things yeah. that I would just add to that is if you, uh, educational leadership, uh, Fidel the Kappen, um, there's a magazine I get from BYU. Uh, every, every, it's the topic right now. And so, and then uh, Dr. Schramm mentioned Martin Seligman. And he's written a book, multiple books, and we use that to initially get us going. That's where we learned about the VIA character strengths. And so some of it was just trying to research and grab a hold of something and look at it and then try and implement it. So you'll find a lot of professional uh, articles right now that help guide you on books or things like that. You know, one, I'll, I'll encourage you all, viacharacterstrengths.com. Org. 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 Org.
look that up. You can take the survey in about 10 minutes. 15, 15. 15, 15. It'll give you your top, well, I think top 15, 20. It gives you 24. I think. And, but then it gives you your top five. And, what, and as we said, the, the secretary for the school nurses took and printed them all off on nice cards for all the district office staff. Did we do that? <coughs> yeah. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I've got mine right there. And every once in a while, when I've got a tough situation, I'll look down and see what mine are. And, and it was weird. I thought, did I just answer this way? But my number one is leadership. And number two is humor. And that would mean something to some of you guys. <laughs> they tell me I think I'm funny. So anyway. But, but you know, kindness, some of those things. And so it really does make a difference if you think about, I'm going to use my strengths to deal with this issue. And if we can get our kids to have that idea and know they have strengths to deal with tough things, they can do hard things, but they've got to know they've got the strengths to do them. And I think what, what we heard this morning was just, was just tremendous from both Dr. Red and from, I had to leave in the middle of uh, Mr. Wilkinson's speech, but great stuff. So mm -hmm. with that, we'll turn the time over to you. All right. What a great, give him a big round of applause.